Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames, messieurs, c'est Dirty with Sedity. Welcome to uh, this session, um, the Middle East in 2030, geopolitical and economic perspectives. Uh, it's my pleasure. I'm sorry we're a little late, but I think lunch was too, um, first of all, delicious, too engrossing. And we started a little late. And then always very, very stimulating com uh, conversations at lunch. However, we are here at last. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Ibtissam uh, Al-Ketbi, Al who is the president and founder of the Emirates Policy Center. Um, next to her is uh, Bernardino Leon Gross, um, director general of the Anwar Gharesh Diplomatic Academy, and a man who is very um, involved in the Libyan settlement, which, fingers crossed, may work. We hope so. Um, and then Muna. Uh, Maktam Edbid, who is an Egyptian senator and who is always very, very eloquent and who is insulted by my determination to keep it to six minutes. And next to Mona is um, Volker Petes, who is the special representative of the Secretary General for Sudan and head of the UN Integrated Transition Assistance Mission um, in Sudan. Sudan, of course, rather interesting country and has just signed the Abraham Accords. And so the final um, panelist is Itamar Rabinovich, well known to many of you here, who uh, has been a very distinguished um, Israeli diplomat. He was the ambassador in Washington, D.C., and also a very distinguished academic, and spent quite a long time in the years past negotiating with the Syria of Hafez al-Assad. So he's had his work cut out. Now, um, Yogi Berry, the American baseball player and manager, famously said that it's, um, it's very difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. So we are thinking now about the next nine years, up to 2030. Now, if the past is any kind of prolo prologue, I think we're actually in for rather a tough um, decade, because if you look at the past decade, really have the, the 10 years from the uh, so-called Arab Spring, and it hasn't actually worked out very well. Um, even in Tunisia, which was hailed by many as a great success story, uh, I think you've got Qais Said now taking powers that um, disappoint those who thought that uh, Tunisia was really becoming a fully-fledged democracy. Libya, of course, we've got what is effectively a civil war, Syria, um, still civil war, really. Idlib, for example, is not controlled yet by Bashar al-Assad regime. Iraq is, um, well, it's, it's evolving towards a better future, but it would be hard to say that it's really entirely uh, Pacific. Let's, look, let's define, first of all, what we mean by the Middle East. I think for practical purposes, we should probably go from the Atlantic Ocean, from Morocco all the way to the Gulf here, and include, obviously, Iran. Now, I think the subjects that we need to deal with is why are we in a pretty difficult situation at the moment, and what is going to be, where, what are the, the germs of optimism that we can find in the next decade? Mm -hmm. 